Hey everybody, Jake here, and uh, we got another live unboxing. Let me get my life together real quick while I wait for someone, anyone, to come in so I can watch the comments over here in case you guys want to chat. Okay, I did my last unboxing live, and I got like six people in there. That was pretty cool. Um, that's a lot to me, I guess. So we have another unboxing today. Hey, person, um, if you want to, feel free to chat, and I'll... Uh, be more than happy to have a conversation with you if you have any questions or anything. Um, so we have watch straps here, knives here. Um, is there any preference at all as to which one that I open first? Mm, I feel like the knives are more exciting, so let's go ahead and start with the watch straps. So let's go ahead and we'll open this up. Get a knife here. These are from Clockworks Synergy. I really, really like their watch straps. I have one that I'm wearing right now. Um, that was more of a ripping than a cutting. That's okay. So let's see. Here we go. They only sent me one box or two straps, which is kind of odd. Um, their boxes are decent, though, for the money that you spend. They had a July 4th sale. It was like 25% off, so I saved a little bit of money there. Okay. Um, so let's see. First off, I got this Perlon. This is black Perlon strap. I was curious because the I currently have a uh, oh gosh a NATO on there, and it's a little rough. Well, not rough, rough, but it's a little. So I was wondering if this was any softer. It does not feel softer, and it is super, super thin. I'm not sure if I'm going to like that very much, but we will certainly try it. Actually, I put that one on here in just a second. Also got this gray, orange, and black two-piece NATO. This one is actually quite a bit softer than the one I have currently. Let's see. I'll go ahead and swap one of these on here. Probably the black pearl on one first. I do, I took a risk. Um, I got, my watch is bronze, so I got a, like a plain black to match on this one. And I was hoping that they had a, uh, this rose gold would be close enough, but it is very much not. So that's going to be swapped very, very soon, but I wouldn't put it on here. Um, so let's see, I'm going to get some of this out of the way. I'm going to take this off. This is one of, this one is a Clockworks Energy Heavy NATO. Um, I got it because they had the bronze on it, and it patinas very well with my watch. I think it fits in pretty well. So let's go ahead and try out this pearl on here. I mean, if you've never put on a NATO strap, you leave your watch pins on and you just kind of feed it through. And um, the heavy NATO is a little different, but this one's pretty standard. Just kind of get it to about where you're going to want it. And you feed it through this side as well. And it kind of puts a little barrier in between the watch and your wrist. Let's see, this is going to be a little stiff since it's the first, first time. And I guess with this one, you just punch it through the fabric. That's a little weird. Um, It's not bad. A lot more minimal than my current one. It's not terrible, though. Really excited for this one. So a lot of Clockworks Energy bands. Hey, two more people. Uh, one more person. That really hurts, guys. Um, so Clockworks Energy Bands, a lot of them have this quick-release mechanism here, which is just like a little rod. You pull it back, and then you can insert your watch strap and um, put it in. So it's like this quick little spring. So much easier than using a spring bar tool. Those are extremely, extremely annoying to deal with. So there's that. Okay, so I'm not sure what else I can talk about as far as watch bands go, so let's open up the knives. I said knives. Um... Real Steel had a sale on their website. It was half off. So obviously when you go on a manufacturer's website, you're going to pay MSRP, which is a little bit higher than, um, you know, what you're going to pay like a retailer. Like if I were to get these off of Blade HQ or Amazon or something, hey, that, hopefully that same person's back. Um, but that was a stupid cut. That was dumb. Don't do that. But since it was half off, it was still quite a good price. I will say their packaging is not impressing me. This is kind of garbage. 
Nothing incriminating in here? Sweet. Okay, so we got two boxes. We got that one and this one. So, um, I believe this top one, we'll go to it first. I believe, yeah, this is the E77. Got this in uh, the Coyote handle finish, or Coyote, depending on where you are, or how you speak wrong, with a black wash blade. Um, This is their cheapest knife, and I got it. I'm probably going to end up uh, giving it away or giving it to a friend or something like that. But I just got it because it's like 15 bucks. So might as well if I'm already ordering from the website. Let's take a look at it. Oh, that is smaller than I thought it would be. It's actually a lot closer to the size that I prefer. The G10 feels pretty good, very textured. We're going to have to flip that. I'll probably do that like literally right now. Um, it's looking pretty good. Black wash liners kind of match the blade. I'm not a huge fan of black blades. Normally they kind of wear, but this is not bad. I'm going to be careful with the hardware and not scratch it. Well, let's see. Oh, that is some weak detent. It does flip. Yeah, that's much more of a thumb stud knife. Yeah, so the detent is weak as hell for a flipper. Also, it has a very subtle recurve in the well, not that subtle. It has recurve in the blade. Ergonomically, it's pretty good. Um, the steel on this is 8CR14 MOV, so you have an extra MOV. I'm not a chemist, I have no idea what that means. Um, ergonomics are decent. I can get a good three finger grip. The end kind of trails off at this point, and I'm not a big fan of that. Let's see. It does kind of drop shut. It's fairly smooth. The centering is good. Um, that's much, much more of a thumb stud knife. I've, I've got to say that. I don't know what this is, why this is there, or what function it serves. Is that a bottle opener? Or I don't have any bottles to open right now. Uh, the flipper tab is okay, but the detent, this detent is just garbage. Like, I could misfire this so easily. I could just do this all day. This is just pitiful. As a thumb stud, it's great. But flipper? Mm. If I do, for whatever reason, decide to keep this, that flipper tab is getting ground off. That is for certain. Because I feel like this part here is good enough. I don't really need the flipper tab to help. Um, it kind of has a sharpening choil. It's a little wide. It's, I know it's difficult for you guys to see. This live stream is not great. The texture on the blade is decent, though. I'll say that. Has real steel, it's very large there. On the back side, Leon Gang design. It's designed by a gang of people. That's kind of cool. Um, let me flip this pocket clip and I will see how it fits in. Where is my here we go? My fantastic little Weeha bit driver set. These do appear to be Torx T6. So let me get my T6 bit here, and try to flip these. If you guys want to, feel free to chat with me, or if you have any questions about anything, or if you want to make a comment, or if you want to say something disparaging and make me feel bad, you can do that too. I'll respond to all of those things. There we go. That was a lot more painless than I thought it was going to be. That's something down. Yeah, the detent is just not doing it for me. As a thumb stud, it's great. Like, it, it really is. It's, it's very pleasant to actuate that way. And it is ambidextrous, which is really, really nice. Um, the liner lock, eh, you know, kind of, but it does have four-way pocket clip. Uh, thumb studs on both sides and is a flipper also so that's just the weakest freaking detent on any flipper I've ever seen in my life that's just that's that's pitiful that is going to be a massive demerit in the review for them to even include a flipper tab on this is stupid if they're going to try to dial this detent in like that's just that's inexcusable well hold on if you push button it it's not bad if you light switch it it's terrible mm. But if, you, if they were going to do a push button, why the hell would they make it so pointed? Like, it actually, it's okay there. That's not bad. But I, nor I normally light switch flick. So this is not... That's... Mm. Yeah. 
I don't know about that. Let me see how it is in the pocket real quick. I know you guys can't see my pocket, but oh, that's gonna that's not cool. Okay, so these screws stick up. You can see that there. Much better against this background, actually. Those screws stick up. That's a huge pain in the ass. My pants just got snug snagged. Not snug. My pants got snug. And my pants got snagged right there on the um screws. So that's not that's not cool. Um, quick size comparison for you guys, so you can kind of see what we're looking at here. Um, here's the Spyderco Cento Fonte 3 from my last video. So, Cento Fonte 3 has a much, much bigger handle. Um, here's what I'm carrying with me at the moment. The ZT0450 CF. Handle is slightly longer. Blade is ever so slightly longer. Just uh, like a fraction. Um, much more narrow. Let's see, and I guess the spider code dragonfly, so you can see like a tiny knife against it. Also a new acquisition that I did not do an unboxing of because that's silly, the uh, Victorinox Classic. Bam, right there. So this is okay. Um, for $15, it's, it's, in my opinion so far, damn good. Um, for 30 ish no, I really wish they'd gone with a better steel here. I do kind of like the black wash blade. Like, it feels pretty good. I feel like it's going to get scratched all to hell, though. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and put that to the side, and we'll get to the main event here, if I can flip the box around correctly. This is the Real Steel G5 Metamorph in soft gray. Much nicer box than this, like, flimsy kind of cardboard, but it should be because this knife... Is like seventy some dollars on the website, so I picked up like thirty five bucks. It's a pretty good deal. Um, so it's kind of this weird texture kind of thing. Let's see oh, if I can get it. It is not wanting to come out. Come on, you bastard! Come on! Come on! Really? There we go. Okay, I think that's good enough. I was going to try to do something very dramatic, but that's not going to work because this is tight as hell. Okay. <sighs> that was super lame because the knife is under here. What do we got here? We got a real steel thing. Did they send me the wrong knife? This has the C. Oh, it's their different models. Okay. Okay. So you can see there are different models there. Holy shit. Um, so we have the Griffin, the Megalodon, the Horus, Snow Leopard, Taken, Flying Shark, Puko, Blue Sheep. The Blue Sheep. Who names a knife a Blue Sheep? Thor. Sea Eagle. And you have the E571 and the Blue Sheep. That's good enough. Okay, um, under the foam, we have another little thing. Oh, this is actually for the knife. So it has some specs here. Um, I don't know how well you guys can see this. It is a liner lock, 14C 28N steel, which is a little better than the 5CR 15 MOV or whatever the hell it is. Blade length 3.54, blade thickness 0 0.12, which is okay. The handle is aluminum. The open length is 8.15 inches and it weighs 2.65 ounces and also has warranty here. Mm, I don't know about that. Okay. Toss this foam aside. Ooh, a little fancy cloth. Look at that. It's almost like they care. Oh, it's wrapped up in the cloth. Guys, it's like I'm getting a CRK. But, you know, $500 cheaper. Let's see. Let's go ahead and get this box out of the way because I want this to be super, super cool. It's like a, it's like a beige carpet reveal. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Um. Damn, that pocket clip is shiny. Look at that. Can you see? Yep, you can see me talking. Look at that. Boom. Okay, so this is a front flipper. Is the main reason I was wanting to try it out because I've been very curious. Um, but let's take a look at it before I open it up. The fit and finish seem okay. The edges here are a little sharp. The backspacer is nice and rounded. There is a lanyard hole with 
Is that glue? I don't know how well you guys can see there. It looks like there's glue right there. Um, that's going to require some investigation. It does have jumping, though. Um, so this is my first time doing a front flip, and I see a lot of people struggle with it. I think I'm going to be okay, but I don't know, and I don't want to make a jackass on myself, so let's try this. Oh, that's harder than I thought. Oh, look, I did it. That is a long and skinny blade. Holy hell. Um, ergonomically, I'm not feeling this, but it's not really a hard to use knife. So the odds of me gripping it like in a hammer grip are very low. This looks stabby as heck. Um, much better sharpening toil on this one. Much, much better labeling. That is very nice, very subtle. On this side, it says 14 c 28 in G5 Metamorph O-Stop Hell Design. Very thin, kind of bitey liner lock on this. How is the... Mmm, it's okay. I'm, I'm still not very good at this front flipper thing. You can open it slow if you want to. The action on this is just awful. It's so... It's very... Let's see if you can hear this. I don't know. It's maybe it's me. Maybe not. Um. Ah, eh, screw it. Let's disassemble it. I'm gonna take it apart. I'll put this fancy cloth off to the side, though. Uh, I don't know if we should do this one as well. Probably so. Screw it. I ain't got nothing else to do. Pretty slow day. The wife is asleep, so. Let's see, I don't think we'll have to remove the pocket clip on this um, because that's the only position you can have for it, so I don't think it's holding anything together. Um, so let's go ahead and just start with the screws down here. They are not Loctite, so that's fantastic. Oh, they do have a little bit of Loctite. I just didn't feel it, apparently. It does look red, so keep that in mind if you're disassembling one of these. I'm going to try very hard not to touch this aluminum finish because it will be scratched all to heck. I felt a little bit of Loctite on that. There was a little bit of resistance. It wasn't too bad. Much shorter screw. Well, not much shorter, but shorter. Okay, and now a uh, T8 for the pivot. There's damn glue on this, too. What the hell? There's glue on here. Why is there glue? There's glue on the pivot screw. Can you kind of see that, that kind of off-white tab? Jesus. Um, okay, let's see. If you think my desk is a mess, it's because it is. Let's see. There's damn glue on the bottom of the screw. What the hell? Why? It's like a little glue or a clear rubber spacer. Oh, I'm a moron. So I think that is there so it doesn't scratch the aluminum underneath. Uh, well, you're not watching this because I'm smart. You're, I don't know why you're watching this, actually. So let's see. So yeah, there's like these rubber spacers all over everything. No wonder the action is shit. Oh, that's not rubber. That's... Is that oil? It's, it's so viscous and sticky. Hold on. I have like a, uh, a microfiber cloth that I kind of use for kind of doing stuff like this. Kind of. It's a little thicker. So let me kind of get some alcohol and kind of just kind of wipe all this off. It's disgusting. I don't know what the hell they put in here, but this is not very good. Now, normally I would say let your knives break in with whatever they're running on, but this looks gross. Um, also, let's take a look here. So, it does have a steel liner. It's very, very polished, which is weird for a liner. And it has this nice backspacer. I actually do kind of like that. There's that glue stuff on the lanyard pin thing. So yeah, that's that's weird. 
you can I can see some machining marks on the um, inside of the pivot. Not, that's not a demerit or anything. It, there's, it's smooth. It's, I was just commenting on that. Um, let me get this off. So this uses like um, barrel. Son of a bitch. Barrel shaped. Um, what do you call these? I'm not blanking right now. Bearings. They're barrel shaped bearings. And this stuff is so viscous and gross. It's like they put like Vaseline on here or something. So they're on like a plastic brace, but it's just these stainless steel, just little barrel shaped things. Blade is coated in this stuff. It's gonna get everywhere. This is gross. Like they put a lot on here. Like a lot, a lot. Like did they hire Nick Shabazz to work at the uh, lube station for real steel? Holy shit! Like look, it's gunked up in the. I don't even know what the hell that is. I don't know. It's not for a stop pan. It's not like there's an internal stop pan or something. I don't know what, the, what that's for. It's a random hole in the blade. Um, I'll try to get it out of this. That, was that too? That's too big. I get most of it out. It's good enough for me. It's gross. I'm curious to know how this knife is going to function, though. Um... It's a little bit longer than stuff I normally carry. That's not a problem. Just a a note. These liners do come out, but I don't know why I would have to remove them. Also, you can see the uh, aluminum is already nicked right here. I don't know why you can see that, but it's already dinged up out of the factory. Yeah, um, I think for the price I paid, I'm okay. But if I had paid full price for these, I would be uh, a little pissed off. The fit and finish is not great. Um, I'm seeing a lot of scratches on the handles, which they're aluminum, I understand. But to be honest, I would have thought that they would redo the paint. Oh, Jesus, this came off too. Hmm. Didn't want that to come off. Okay, there we go. It's back on. But I don't know why you can see there's scratches all along here. It's torn. It's ridiculous. It's They're all internal. It's not a huge deal, but it's a thing. It's there. Okay, let's get some good stuff on here. So we have the nano oil. Now that we're all cleaned up, I'll go ahead and put just a couple drops here. A little bit on the pivot. I'll drop down one of these bearings here a little bit more on top if it'll come out and i will drop the blade down on there a little bit more there oh that was a lot holy crap a little bit on the descent ball path got the other one there There. It's going a lot smoother than I thought it would. Um, oh, fudge. Okay, let me try to get this on without scratching anything. Oh, no, that's not going to happen. Okay, let me put on the back spacer onto this side first because it keeps wanting to drop off over here. There we go. Okay. Luckily, the lanyard pin is staying in, so that's actually kind of helpful. Try to lift up the blade here.
Oh gosh. See, so, yeah, I did jinx myself. I said it was going smoothly, and then it starts messing up. This is a form of hell. Um, okay. I get that locked in. Okay, nothing's dropping off this side, but it isn't wanting to latch on. I'm an absolute moron. See, this is why I am not who people go to for actual information. Because there's a damn D shape on the pivot and I wasn't paying attention. Okay, let me go ahead and lock this down so everything doesn't fall apart instantaneously. And we'll work on centering in just a moment. Hey, four people, look at that. Okay, so now we want to try to push this back, spacer back. I, I think this is aluminum, so I'll kind of, there we go. I'm going to get kind of lined up, and then we will put in the other two screws here, which are T6, and swap that back. That wasn't terrible, but that wasn't fun. Thank you for the like, whoever did that. That is awesome. Considering I'm just sitting here and rambling. Oh, come on. There we go. Okay, now that these are secured, I will close. Hey! Arrive at any time, that's fine. It's better late than never. I don't know how long this is going to go, I guess, until I run out of stuff to talk about. Let's see if we can get this. It's a little tight there. Looks a little better. Maybe if I keep the actual blade tip up so I can look at the centering while I... That's about right in the middle. Let's see if this runs any better. Nope. <laughs> Okay, I'm thoroughly convinced that now it is my technique. Okay, I got it that time. There we go. So that is a little, quite a bit smoother, actually. Um, I've heard you can do this. I'm not sure about this detent. I'm going to hold it off screen so I don't... Oh, yeah, that is snappy. Whoa, what? that lockup is really far across. I'm like 75%, I guess. My go-to method of choice to sharpen knives. Um, at the moment, it's actually taking it to my local knife shop. I have not invested in a sharpener yet. I'm trying to decide whether or not to get the Lansky. Um, it's like 30 bucks or something like that. I just, I don't know if I should do that and just have my local guy sharpen it for now. It's like five or six bucks to get him to sharpen the knives. Um, or if I should wait and invest in a decent system like a KME or Wicked Edge or something like that. Also looked at the Spyderco Sharp Maker. Um, do you have any recommendations at all, Andy? Um, for anything you tried? Because I would love some. I'm 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 gonna have to practice that. That's that's embarrassing. Yeah, it is kind of a a, a decent looking knife though. Um, kind of it has some appeal to it. This is my first aluminum handle knife. Not a big fan. Just going to go ahead and toss that out there. Not a huge fan here. You can do that, but I'm really scared to do that with one hand. Just because there's not... It's very slick. Um, I'm, I'm just, I'm just going to stop trying to flick that. A little bit of jumping here. It's not, it doesn't feel slippery in my hand. Like, I can't really pull it out. But... 
The material's pretty slick. Thanks. Let's go ahead and um, I guess we'll take apart this one now. This one feels so much more robust, but the the, the tent on it is just absolute garbage. I'm curious to see if you're using that same very thick kind of viscous oil on the internals for this one. But I guess we'll find out. Um, go ahead and open that up and we'll take out the pivot first since I already have the T8 in there. Oh, sorry about that, guys. Come on. So yeah, they're using some sort of Loctite. I'm seeing a little bit more of it here. It doesn't um doesn't seem to be too bad though. So let's go ahead and okay, so it's using backspacers. So let me see if I can just take off this scale. That saves so much time for me. Possible time for you. How are you guys doing today? Or girls, I don't know who all's here. Hope y'all are having a good day so far. Mine has been okay, rather uneventful. Got a nap in, that's always great. On your day off. Very unique handle shape to this. I don't know if I like it, but also I found out while, oops, sorry about that again. I keep bumping that damn thing. I found out while looking up a little bit on this knife right before I got it. I was going to get it anyway because how cheap it was. But apparently there's a Sanrin Moon, yeah, Sanrin Moon model. It's a mouthful. That looks very similar to this. And for those of you who don't know much about um, knives, Sanrin Moon is kind of like um, Jin Hao. They're kind of like the Jin Hao of knife stuff. Oh yeah, I know the sharpeners you're talking about, Andy. Andy said that... Um, He's been seeing these people on YouTube using expensive whetstones and stuff for sharpening. The whetstones, the only problem with that is you have to be skilled. And um, I'm not. I would be terrified to screw up my knives um, if I used a whetstone. So I've been looking at fixed sharpeners with a set angle. But um, you mentioned you're using the push-through sharpener. The only thing I would say about that is I, I've heard, I've most of my life, everyone I know has used one of those as well, but I've heard they remove a lot of material. Um, but that's just what I've heard. I, I'm not actually sure how much material they're removing or if it's, you know, negatively impacting your knife in any way. So, yeah, this is a stainless steel black wash liner as well. Got some, what do you call those? Standoffs there. These look like. Plastic washers, I can't, okay, so we got, oh, okay, okay, so these are plastic, but it has, looks like copper or maybe phosphor bronze there, this is using the same kind of thick paste, which I think works fine here, but, oh, dang it, so I'm not going to mess with that, for now at least, I'll probably try nano oil on it later, but, I don't think it worked very well for the metamorph. I think the metamorph is working a lot better with a bit of a thinner oil. Oh, that's not cool. Um, Andy said that they, when he rubs his finger along the blade after sharpening, you can see uh, kind of a it has like kind of a black smear from the removed material. Um, yeah, at that point, I would probably look at something else if it's like a really expensive knife. If it's if it's a knife you can stand losing and you just need a quick sharpen, that's probably going to be about the fastest way. Um, so if, if you don't mind too much, I'd probably stick with something like that. If you're looking for an entry-level sharpener, I've heard a lot of good stuff about Lanskis. Uh, you can either get them in a three-stone version, a five-stone version, or a diamond stone version, which I think is a little bit overkill unless you have... You will want the diamond stones if you have higher-end steels. So... If you have M4 or M390 or Maximit or something, you're going to want diamond stones. Which, to be honest, if you're working with those steels, um, I would take them to a sharpener anyway. Unless you just really hate yourself or you have a lot of time to kill and you don't mind tearing up your stones. Because those are going to absolutely wreck 
your sharpening stones. Now, if you have something like 8CR13 MOV or VG10, um, 15C28N, any of those, it's, you know, oh my god. Then, yeah, I wouldn't worry too much about it, Andy, if they're, um, if they're cheaper knives that you don't mind too much. Like I said, those are probably going to be the uh, quickest way to sharpen them. I will say, um, if you're looking for a relatively cheap knife, I'm fairly impressed with this one so far, with it being, I think they're about $20 normally, $25. I got it for about $15 on sale. Oh, that's too tight. Holy hell. <laughs> Jeez. Um, but yeah, they remove a bit of material, but if you're looking for something quick, wouldn't really worry about it too much. The tent on that thing is still just absolute garbage. Still very good with the thumb stud, but geez, I think it's still a little too tight. I don't know why they would make it a flipper if the detent for the flipper is just that bad. Like, it's so... I don't know. Much, much better with a finger stud. Thumb stud, not a finger stud. You could... I guess you could kind of... No, see? Doesn't work. There we go. That's still terrible. The worst part is if you light switch this, you're basically running your finger along all this jimping back here. That is not very pleasant. So if you're going to try to flip this knife, if you have one, push button it. It works decently. Still prefer the thumb stud though. Okay, I think it's enough disassembly for the moment. But yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty curious about this. I actually have... Um, I have been needing to get a sharpener, so I'll probably pick up the Lansky set. Um, let's see. Maybe a week or so. So um, I'll get back to you on that, Andy. I think I'm going to try that out, just the base $20 or $30 one, and see how it does. Because I do have some knives that are needing to be sharpened um, coming up soon. Probably need to sharpen my... CRKT folding razel here and my ever faithful spider cut Sintafonte 3 that I use way 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 too much in comparison to my other knives love this thing though but with that VG10 steel it wears on somewhat quickly and the uh, 8CR13 MOV on this little folding razel here is even softer this is a good knife though um, in some aspects On the, on the sharpening, you mean? Yeah, I think I will when I get decent with it. I definitely want to put in a little bit of work. I have a super cheap um, Tech Force Speedster assisted knife that I'm probably going to test it out on so I can get down the, um, the technique and make sure I don't damage any of my more expensive knives. So I'll probably start with this and then move up to this. Yeah, I'll definitely make one of those for you guys. Um, it may take a couple of weeks after I get the set, but I'll probably give it a few weeks, give it, you know, try to get the technique down. I have some, some cheaper knives I can test it on, and then I can uh, do a review and go ahead and put out a tutorial kind of thing at the same time. There are some tutorials, but, you know. Just wanted to ask about that company. Which company do you mean? But yeah, I'll do a tutorial for you guys if that's helpful to anyone. Um, I'm, it probably won't be super good, but, you know. Oh, Tack Force. <laughs> my my Tack Force knife. Um, so this was a gift, so it, it is important to me um, sentimentally. And to be 100% honest, it's kind of what got me into knives. So it is very similarly to your real steel here. It is a flipper with a thumb stud, but... Unlike this one, it is assisted. So there is a spring right about here that once you get the knife out to a certain, maybe like here, it springs open. Is it a good brand? It is not. Um, now, let me say, if this is all you can afford or all you can find, 
it's okay. I've had experience with a couple of them. The only thing I will warn you of is I highly recommend you save up just a few more dollars and get something a little bit safer because these are not safe. Um, for example, here you see the pivot. It is untooled. You cannot see it on this side, but you can see it on this side. That's because it's not flush. It will not close at all, and I can't remove it to tighten it. Um, the clip snapped off on this one after about a week or two. They're very poorly made. This is also entirely steel. So while it may be durable, as you can see from it getting the hell beat out of it on the back here, it is extremely heavy. It's... It's heavier than these two knives stacked on top of each other. This is G10 with steel liners. This is all titanium. It's it's heavier than that. Um, it is heavier than my CRKT folding razel, and it is a lot thinner. So they're very heavy. If you're looking for something cheap that you kind of just want to try, you want to see if you like a knife, you know, maybe. they. Have, this is one of their less polarizing designs. A lot of their stuff is very very, very um, bright or kind of mall ninja -y. But this one's okay. Um, the thumb stud is decent. The flipper's pretty good. Like I said, it is assisted. You can de-assist this. The only problem is it doesn't have a detent ball. And a detent ball is basically um, a kind of ball that says this has a little stud instead. So there, it's okay. Not super great. I wouldn't recommend them if you didn't have to. Will I ever do live pin videos? I can do one right now. Um, let's see. I have pins with me all the time, dude. All the time. So, this is what I carry on the most because I carry it with me every day. And it's scratched all to hell. Um, let me see if I can show you why. So, yeah, you can't see anything. So, this is my wallet. It is made out of aluminum, and um, it's pretty smooth down by now, but when I got it, it was a little rough. This is from a company called EOS. These were on clearance for like 10 bucks. This pen sits right here. I get small wallet in my pocket every day. So it's, you know, it gets scratched up pretty bad. There's so much patina on this thing, and I love it. It's very, very durable. The only thing that scares me with it is I have dropped the cap, which sounds scary, but it deformed a little. I was actually able to stretch it back out and get it to fit back. I do need to put another cartridge in here, though. Um, I use this pen a lot. It's, like I said, it's always in my pocket. It weighs a very, very, very large amount for such a small pen. It actually weighs probably about three times as much as my Pelican here, just because copper is so freaking heavy. Um, you said it's the only brand available in your country. The others are overpriced. Got a cramp from that brand. Um, I think you'll be okay. I wouldn't, a karambit is a very specialized blade shape. It's kind of a hot bill instead of a normal shape. So it's kind of hooked like this. I know of some people that do EDC them with varied success. Very good for piercing. They can be good for slicing, not much else. But if you are trying to see if you like a karambit or not, not a bad choice. Um, I have a friend who's really into karambits. But yeah, so this pin weighs a lot, but I like it. I don't really notice it all that much. And for it to take the abuse it does, it writes perfectly. It's so dinged up and it's it's beat all hell. Got a really good deal on this. Found this on eBay for like 40 bucks or so. There was a seller that had a large stock of very different colored uh, Caveco Lilliputs. And he was going through them all. So that's kind of, that was kind of fun. Let me actually move these out of the way real quick and kind of organize just a few things here. That's a lie. I'm not organizing anything. I'm literally, sorry about that again. I'm literally pushing stuff aside so I can bring out my pens here. So I have not done a review on this, but I might. This is what I keep all my pins in. I keep bumping that. I don't even know why you guys are watching this video anymore. Terrible. So I keep all my pins in. And this is very blown out at the moment because of the exposure and everything. But this is a pretty decent case. This is pretty cheap. I think it's like $15 or something like that. It holds 48 pins. 
So I have pens on both sides of this. Have you seen ZNA Productions on YouTube? He makes a lot of different weapons, especially knives, different stuff. Also, how did you get your wife into fountain pens? I've not seen any of those. Um, I I try to stay away from violent situations. A lot of my family kind of mm, not going to get into that too much, but I try to stay as safe as I can. Um, so I don't look too much into weapon videos and stuff like that. But I'll definitely check that out, actually, just because you recommended it. Um, and thank you. This is a pretty decent case. The, the material is not super great. Some of the stitching is misaligned. But for the price, I really couldn't beat it. And I had to have somewhere to store my pens. So this is where I keep a majority of them. Also, how did I get my wife into fountain pens? Sorry, I missed that one. Um, so actually... <laughs> Oh gosh, where do I start? Okay, so I was doing reviews. Now, some stuff I buy exclusively for reviews with no intention of actually using it. And this right here, the Palette Metropolitan, is a perfect example of that. I had no intention to use this pen. It's really good, though. I gotta say, it is, it is a really good pen, especially for the price. So I got it, and my wife was like, hey, I kind of like that. Because she was really into Pilot G2s. So she knew the brand and everything. And it's like, okay, well, you know, go ahead and take it. You're more than welcome to have it. So she started using it, and I've been trying to get her to fountain pens for months, and she just, she was not into it at all because it's it's high maintenance, and it's a lot of work and everything. And I was just like, well, you know, you don't have to, you don't have to use them, but I, I would appreciate you trying them. So I had her try a few things. She tried my Lamy Safari. She really didn't like it. Um, she tried a few other things, and it just, mm, but yeah, that pen got her into it. So this one is hers. This one is hers. This one is hers. This one is hers. Um, this little twisby down here in the corner that you can't see, the mini all is hers. This one is hers. And let's see if there are any on this other side. I'm going to kind of try to sort of bend this over without hitting too much. Um, I don't think any of those are hers. Oh, the squid pen down here is hers. Also, she has taken my Delight Smurfs. It is hers now. She liked the color of it and liked the way it wrote. So it is hers now. And I'm also currently reviewing her Pilot Machia, or Platinum Machia Classics. Got a Lamy All-Star Charged Green for half price a few days back. So that's actually why we got this pin here. I had gotten my um, LX, my Lamy LX in rose gold. And then Lamy America had a really good sale. And we got this for, like, about half price, like you mentioned. It was a really, really good price. And so she picked that up. It is a uh, Caveco mint green, um, mint green, bluey kind of color sport. So it's, it's nice. Is This was uh, the, oh, gosh, the second or third pin that I had. Um, I really like it quite a bit. It, I had baby's bottom on the very first nib I got on this. is a little frustrating. Um, Andy, you said your girlfriend gave you, you gave your girlfriend a spare Pilot Metro and she hardly used it, didn't care much for it. So I was like, I'll take that back. Yeah. Um, some pens, she is super not into it. I'm like, why, why don't you, like, she really didn't like the Pelican. I'm like, how do you not like this? It's, it's beautiful and it writes amazing. But I, I don't know, man. She's, she's picky. Maybe, maybe you have the same kind of issue there. But I, I don't know. I don't know. She she really likes Twisby. I know that. Um, she stole my pink Twisby for a long time, and she is super excited about the Twisby Go. Holy crap, she will not be quiet about that thing. And I think that's going to be a massive, massive, uh, what do you call that, like a second win for Twisby. It's kind of died out a little. People still really like the Egos and stuff, but they've kind of calmed down. I think the Go is going to bring them right back. I have to get that and the Cappuccino. The broad nibs have the issue. That's what it is. I got a broad nib on that Caveco, and it it was just, it was my first broad nib. I didn't like it. I've gotten a broad nib on my, uh, I picked up this Twisby all, or 580 all orange aftermarket for not a marked up price. I was super hyped about that. Um, let me see if I can reduce the exposure at all on this. So I'll pull the light back a little bit for you guys. There we go. That is so much, so much better. I apologize for that. Um, so I got this at a really good price a while back, and it has a broad nib on it, and I love it, but I hated that Caveco broad nib. I had to put down so much force. When using it, I didn't know what was wrong with it. But yeah, I love the uh, the cappuccino color for the... Exposure's back to being terrible. 
I love the cappuccino color for the Caveco Sports as well. They're very, very nice. I like them quite a bit. Girlfriend says she never handwrites things, so I can't blame her fully. I want to pilot cartridge in her for her and just sat there basically. Yeah, so I had to start her off with cartridges too. Um, converters are a little too much work, and she still doesn't fill the pins by herself. I generally do it. I clean them as well. I don't know how I ended up doing that. But um, I mentioned Twisby Go. She likes it because it's very simple. You click it down, and it sucks up the ink, and it's good to go. Um, if you don't handwrite things, that's kind of where it comes into play. So I write every day at work. I have to. I just take notes as I'm doing my work. And she does, she works in the library um, in the children's department, so she doesn't really write too much there, but she studies Japanese at home. And she goes to Japanese class and things like that. So she's always writing. At the moment, it's a lot of kanji. So she really likes very smooth nibs with very bright, punchy ink. So she's at the moment, she's using, um, oh gosh, the Delight Smurfs with Pilot Kosu, not Kosu, Mosu, Momiji, which is like a very bright pinky red color. Um, so she's very, very much into that at the moment. But yeah, if you don't handwrite, it's a little weird. I actually find excuses to handwrite stuff. I haven't done it in a while, but I have like a journal. Um, I have a traveler's notebook that I use quite a bit. I take a lot of handwritten notes just for things throughout my day. Um... I do music stuff, so I write a little bit of music, a lot of lyrics and things like that down. Just any excuse to use paper that I possibly can. And I I really need to write more because actually I got, there was a um, Reddit um, writing swap a while back, like a stationary swap. And I got this very, very pretty notebook here. Um, it's, I forget exactly what kind of paper it is. Midori. So my Midori notebook i love the paper and it. it's really good it's very very close it's almost as good as like um tomway river but i got that notebook and i really want to use it and also at the pin show i got this amazing amazing tomway river notebook from crossfield here and i just uh, i haven't got to use it yet and it's gorgeous and i love it and i gotta 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 find a way to use it um let's see I believe your name is pronounced Vihari. If it's not, I apologize. Um, Vihari said, I'm a student. So yeah, the best excuse to use a fountain pen. I am so envious of you, dude. I wish so bad I was into fountain pens back in high school or college. Um, that, that would have been perfect. I really, really wish. The only thing I will say is I had no money back then. Very, very, very little money. So I wouldn't have been able to afford very much. I probably would have got like a Metropolitan or a Safari and stuck with it for life. Probably a Metropolitan. But yeah, I'm, I'm very envious of you. I wish I had used pens back then or even cared really what I was using. I did have a preference for roller balls, but it wasn't like I wouldn't go out of my way to get them. Um, Andy said, since I'm on summer break, I've basically transcribed, sco transcribed stories and poems into historical documents for ex my excuse to write this summer. But yeah, when college starts back up, I'll be writing for a lot. See, both you guys, you, you get to write in school. That's, that's so awesome. I do like that I can write at work. Um, so I have a good excuse to write, and I, I write quite a bit. So that's how I, that's main, my main review. I notice a lot of things about pens when I'm writing with them and handling them all day. I also get to fidget with them constantly, which is perfect. But um, transcribing stories and poems, I, I've, I've transcribed a little bit of stuff before. Um, it gets a little boring for me, but I don't know. I read a lot, so I, I would think I would read more stories. There's actually been an author that I'm super into lately. Um, I don't know if you, either of you like horror, any of you four people in there like horror novels or anything like that, but I, I don't get easily offended by things, whether it's like political or um, moral or anything like that, or kind of gory stuff. None of it bothers me. However, there's this author named Elias Witherow, who I've been reading. He was on the um, No Sleep Reddit, and he would do short stories on there. It's like horror story Reddit. And he would put a lot of stuff on there, and his stuff is it's amazing. It's so visceral and so gripping and gritty. It's it's fantastic stuff. If, you, if you're into that, dude, go, go read his stuff. You can read a lot of his stories on his uh, Reddit account. 
just Elias Witherow, E-L-I-A-S-W-I-T-H-E-R-O-W. Um, creepy pastas. Yeah, I've checked out some of that stuff before too. I love I, like gory stuff is okay. I'm not super into like murderers and things like that. That's not really me. But monsters, oh god, I love some monster stuff. It's it's great. He has a short story collection called um, "The Worst Kind of Monsters," and a lot of it's monster related, except for the very the last story is um, it's just people and there's no monsters in it but it's horrible i actually had to put it down for a minute and take a breath because it was just like he, the dude doesn't have a filter he just there's there's nothing taboo when it comes to his writing and like i said it's very hard to offend me i got a little offended at that um the very last story which is also on his reddit account if either of you guys want to check that out i will warn you it is very very rough it is it's 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 a lot but yeah um it's really good stuff I, sh I should be reading more cute creepy pastas. Yeah, <laughs> a lot of similarities. That's actually why I started this this YouTube channel. Um, at the time, my wife wasn't into pens. Um, wasn't really. She's she's still on knives. I will say she did show a lot of interest for the. Um, where did it go? The little Victorinox. So I got this, and she's like, "I need to get that from you." And I'm like, "No," but yeah, she, she's super into this for some reason. So it's probably gonna go to her. But um, that's why I started this, just so I could talk to people who like the same stuff as me. That That's really it. Um, I have a lot more people subscribed to me than I ever thought I really would. So that's that's just a massive surprise to me that people even care. Also, I was looking the other day and I uploaded like over 130 videos. And I, I don't know what I've recorded. <laughs> a lot more stuff than I thought, apparently. Yeah, fountain pens, fold, folding knives, and horror stories that's that's pretty high up there um i play video games a decent bit when i have time but yeah those those three are really good um there's also a horror author named darren shan and he do, he does a lot of children's ish stuff like cirque de freak if you've heard of that or demonata both those are fantastic series he also does uh adult horror stuff he, he used to do under that name darren shan but he's also done it recently under the name darren dash and he has some really good books um sunburn and other place is really, 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 really good. Fantastic. You can get those um, on the Kindle versions for a couple dollars. So me and my wife both read a lot. We have a, hundreds of books in the house. But we ran out of bookshelves. And when we bought more recently, I've, I tried to calm her down. I was like, okay, we'll get you a Kindle. Even though, you know, turning paper pages is so much better. I was like, we'll get you a Kindle and you can get all your books on there. It will save us money and it will save space. She never uses it. I end up using it because I toss it in my little uh, bag that I reviewed the, a while back, the nut sack, satchel, which is just, it's such a freaking amazing bag. But it's, the Kindle's very small, has great battery life. Toss it in there. I can charge it at work. Um, when I'm, you know, actually working, when I have a break, I can open it up and read. One more coincidence. Yeah, but uh, God, I, I love reading. I love fountain pens and I love folding knives. They're just, just fantastic. Um, I like them all for different reasons. I like fountain pens because it, it's very unique writing experience. Um, I like reading because it's kind of an escape. Some people use like drugs or alcohol and stuff like that. I just I tend to read books, and folding knives to me are mechanically interesting. The same thing with um, automatic watches. Like this is just. At a mechanical level, it's very, very interesting to me how they get that stuff to work. And and for some knives especially, sorry about that bump there, like this, this is the uh, Millet Knives Torrent. The machining on this knife and just the detail and stuff is what really brings it up for me. Just the, the work they put into it, it's 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 nice. I, I like detail, I've, which you could probably tell from my videos. I bicker a lot about fit and finish if it's not really good. But the detail and stuff is very important to me, whether that be pens or knives or whatever else. And I think that now that you mentioned it, is kind of related to the story too, because when you're writing or reading anything, the detail, the setting, the scene that it's creating and the emotion is very, very important. And it, it's what kind of gets you into it. So if the detail is not there, I really can't get into a book. I don't really enjoy a pen and I don't really enjoy a knife if there's no detail. If it's just bland and there's no attention to any of that stuff, or worse, it's forgotten, that kind of 
takes it away for me. Um, and I've had, you know, I've had pens like that. I've had knives like that. And I've read way too many books like that. But yeah, I, I try to try to balance a little bit of everything. A lot of the, uh, the time for videos is, you know, what genre of games do I play? So I play almost everything. I do not play sports games very much. I've been playing Golf Story on Nintendo Switch just because the writing is hilarious. I, I don't care about golf. Um, and I don't play racing games, really. My my top favorites are going to be RPGs, number one, and then either fighting games or, like, first-person shooters. I'm super into Overwatch. I'm actually wearing a Diva shirt right now. Um, Overwatch is really, really fun. Let's see, RPGs. Um, Octopath Traveler is going to come out on Switch, which I'm super excited about. Dark Souls. Okay, you mentioned Dark Souls. So I tried... I think it was Dark Souls 2 on PC. And I, I was just awful. I probably need to need to sit down and do it. I don't know. I, I, I need to. Like, the lore is very interesting to me, but I haven't really gotten into the game. Have I heard of Binding of Isaac? So, actually, one of the first Switch games I got was Binding of Isaac Afterbirth. I, I've had Binding, Binding of Isaac on PC. So, yeah, I have that on Switch, and I play it every now and then. Um, it's a... Uh, it's a pretty fun, interesting game. And it's kind of, the concept is very interesting as well. So, but yeah, I play a decent amount of games. Um, I'm trying to finish up Persona 5 right now. That one's been kind of on the back burner for a while. Hollow Knight is really, really good. You hated Dark Souls 2. The first one and the third one are way better. So the third one's still a little expensive, but um, I'll... Most of my gaming currently is on the Switch or the PC. I do play PS4 games every now and then. But it's mostly on Switch and PC. If I'm at home, it's going to be on the PC. If it's if I'm at work or something, I'll play on the Switch. But I'm considering getting Dark Souls Remastered for the Switch, or I could probably find it much, much cheaper on PC. So I may have to test that out. I may actually have it. I have way too many Steam games. Um, I'll have to check that out. So I, I probably need to sit down and try that. I have time today, so I might do that after I quit streaming here. I'll probably jump on and try that out. I've heard a lot about the third one. My cousin, um, I often play Overwatch with him. It, it was Josh who was in here on the last live stream. He loves Dark Souls 3. And I just, I don't know. I Like I said, I've only played two. So that was my impressions of the series. Was not a huge fan of it. I don't know. I did play Bloodborne. Bloodborne is excellent. Um, I have not beat it because my PS4 has a problem with crashing for like really intense games. But Bloodborne was really, really, really good. I really liked it a lot. Um, it's It was right up my alley. Very interesting uh, game there. If you guys haven't tried Bloodborne, I, I highly suggest it. Um, if you're into like action RPGs, also the Witcher series is really good. Um, I've played a little bit of one. I have not played two, although I have it, but three, three is awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Uh, you, you mean you didn't buy Dark Souls 2? Uh, the Dark Souls thing is, I don't know. Um, I've played video games since I was a kid, so uh, I've heard so much hype about it, I don't, I don't know. Bloodborne. <laughs> yeah, Bloodborne was... It's hard. It's very fast-paced. Um, it's from the guys who made Dark Souls. But it's it's good. But it... Like I said, it just crashed continuously on my particular console. Which also, my, my PS4 had issues running uh, Final Fantasy XV. Anything that has really high uh, graphical intensity, um, I guess it just overheats or something like that. It's been... It's been like that kind of since we got it. Far Cry 4 also overloaded it quite a bit. Also, if you guys like shooting games at all with RPG elements, Far Cry 5 is excellent. The story on it's amazing. The gameplay is really, really good. Really, really like that game. I finished that game very, very quickly. Um, my wife kind of got into it. I have a PS4 and I'm even I'm not sure about it. Yeah, it's... If you mean the PS4 in general, I'm not... Mm, I really love the controller ergonomically and, and build quality and everything. The controller is fantastic. The console itself, I don't know. Um, I prefer PC. I'm actually going to be... Well, I, I have it, kind of. Um, I bought a computer from a from a friend after he had 
he had built it for someone they ended up not wanting it, so i bought it from him but i only bought certain parts so once i get the rest of the parts built up i'm going to be doing a maybe like a build log thing um and uh build me a new gaming pc i'm not sure if i'm going to go with what graphics card i'm going to go with at the moment i'm hoping the uh either 11 series or 20 series, whatever the hell they're going to call it, it's going to come out and I will be able to um, get like a 1080 Ti pretty cheap. Far Cry 5 was dope. Yes, it was. I, I loved that game. Although I will say the ending was very confusing to me. I thought I got the good ending and it, it left me kind of hanging there. So I had to Google it and I was like, did I get the, did I actually get the good ending or, you know, I don't want to spoil it, but it was, it was great. Um, the fan runs like crazy when I play graphic intensive games. Yeah, mine does too. It spins up and it's very, very loud. Um, also going to air is like CE something. Uh, I forget. It's like a four digit code. Um, I looked it up and they kept telling me to reinitialize my, my PS4 um, and try resetting it and all that stuff. So I did. I tried all that. That didn't work. I had a new hard drive for it. Same thing. Living in a tropical country doesn't help. Yeah, um, I live... Um, I was say in South America. I don't live in South America. I live in the southern part of America. I'm in South Carolina, um, and it gets pretty hot here sometimes. Um, but even playing in the winter, it just it just wasn't great. And I try to keep my house pretty cold. I'm I'm not a big fan of the heat. I try to keep the heat around like 68, 69. But yeah, um, the PS4. I have a PS4, the original ones. I don't have one of the new slim ones, but. Um, it's kind of mixed back for me. I will say when Kingdom Hearts 3 comes out, I'm going to buy it. If it does not run on my PS4, I I don't care what I have to do. I'm going to buy another one and probably used because I'm not, uh, I really don't feel like buying a console twice because they're not cheap, but I, I will buy another um, PS4 just to play Kingdom Hearts 3. Uh, the first two were just so, so good. Really, really good games. I say first two, but then there's like 50 freaking spinoffs. I played most of them. I didn't play Dream Drop Distance all the way through. Um, I just kind of started it. A symbol of PC, but not buying any good games on PS4. Yeah, um, I will say this. So uh, PC, the investment's a little high. Um, I think my PC was, when I built it, um, it was maybe $500-ish, which is a lot of freaking money to me, at least. That's a lot of money. Um, but the games are really where you save the money. So say you get PS3 or PS4 for like 300 bucks or whatever it costs now, I have no idea. Um, the games are so much cheaper, especially on Steam. Oh, uh, wow. You can pick up games for that are still $60 on you know PS4 for like 15, 20 bucks on PC. It's just great. Yeah, Kingdom Hearts 2, um, I played that back in high school. And well, maybe I started at middle school, I think. I don't, I don't remember exactly, but Kingdom Hearts 2 was great. It was it was so much better than the first one, in my opinion. The gameplay was really, really solid. Um, when I got, like, Valor form and stuff, that was that opened up a lot for me. I think my first actual Kingdom Hearts game, though, unfortunately, not to say it was a terrible game, but it was Chain of Memories. So I was used to, like, that card-style combat. And when I actually got to try a real Kingdom Hearts game, it was so, so much better. Um, Birth by Sleep is still my favorite, though. For the storyline, the gameplay, and everything, Birth by Sleep was fantastic. Um... It was on PSP, but they've done so many freaking Kingdom Hearts remastered that it's on, I believe, PS4 as well. That's a really, really good game. Kingdom Hearts in general. Anything Square Enix touches usually is, is pretty good. Um, I'm not really into Tomb Raider, but their new Tomb Raider games are pretty decent. I've never been in Hitman, so I wanted to try that out. But, um, yeah, Kingdom Hearts is great. I really wish they'd bring Kingdom Hearts to PC. The best part of PC, in my opinion, even if games were the same price... It's just the backwards compatibility is so ridiculous. Like, you know, um, I, on my PC right now, I could go and play Final Fantasy 3 or 4 or 5 into, like, older games, um, and they run just fine. Or the original Doom. Um, just, it, like, old PC games, some of them have compatibility issues just from in compatibility mode, but a lot of it, once you buy the game, you don't have to buy a new console every couple of years. It saves you so much money in the long run unless you do something crazy if you get like two 1080 ti's like a triple monitor set up and water cooling loops and all that stuff then you're probably not saving money but you do have a kick-ass looking computer but mine mine's pretty boring i like a transparent glass case my current graphics card is just a 950 that i picked up on ebay for like 100 bucks 
which has been running just fine. Um, I do plan on upgrading it though, because while trying to play Final Fantasy 15, it lags a little bit and I really want to enjoy that game because that game is gorgeous. So I've, I've put it down for now until I get my computer upgraded. But that'll probably be later this year. I might do a uh, like a setup tour as well, just kind of show you guys what it looks like around here. I'm really just at my desk. So, hey there, an ink guy. Hey there to you too. Welcome to the welcome to the live stream. There's not much happening now. It's just a lot of discussion at the moment. But um, have any of you guys looked at the the Twisby all? R or something like that. Pretty interesting. Any new inks? I have not bought any inks since the pen show. So if you watched my pen show streams, I've not gotten any since then. Just because I have so, 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 so many. I have like 30 bottles to make. So I'm trying to get through all of those. Um, it's so tempting though, because companies keep coming out with more, and I really love some of Color versus New stuff. If I had money, I would get it, but that stuff's really expensive. Um, so yes, there will be more inks coming. I don't know when. I'll probably, when I order the Twisby Go from Goulet, I'll probably toss in a few bottles of ink just just for fun. Um, the Twisby Precision. No, um, they released a like a gray version of the 580. Looks kind of interesting. I do want to get the Precision, but it's expensive. And I don't know. It reminds me a lot of, um, let me see if I can, yeah, it's right here. The, the precision reminds me a lot of this. This is a Levenger LTEC 3.0. Um, this is like a, a, a faceted kind of pen, which is similar to that. It looks very similar um, aesthetically. So I'm, but it's a cartridge converter. I will say that the threads on that pen are amazing. So that's really good. But the Twispy Precision, I might pick it up. But at $85, it's just really expensive. Hypodermic gag pen. Kind of. Um, like the needly looking pen things, I think is what you're talking about. Um, you got the Monteverde Joy Sepia in today. I don't have many brown inks, and I need some, man. I need some. I do have the uh, SBRE Brown Ackerman uh, freaking diamine three-way collaboration thing that he did. I love that color. It's like a nice caramel brown. Um, I do need more browns, though. But yeah, I'm, I'm gonna be definitely going to be picking up some more inks. I have a tendency to lean towards uh, like really bright colors, bright blues, purples, pinks, reds. Um, not a huge fan of green. I probably need to pick up some greens and some browns. Um trying to think if there are any other colors are there any colors that you guys recommend that i review the sepia is on sale at goulet um let me actually look that up real quick. well I, I can't at the moment how much is it because i love monteverde monteverde purple rain is amazing the zinc is so good the bottle is great i love this freaking color the Monte Verde inks really blew me away. Six ninety five for thirty mils. That's not bad, man. That's not bad at all. Um, I wish they had something else that I wanted to order. Um, just because the shipping on Goulet, there's no like, which I understand shipping costs money, but you know, private reserve inks. So actually, um, private reserve gray i believe i'm not sure exactly what it was called um i got it in cartridge form a long time ago this is back when i was like i had gotten my first fountain pen i picked up some of those with it um it might have just been mine but they ran a little dry for me which i'm not a fan of dry inks however if you are i think that worked very well the color was nice on it um I really like the color on it. I haven't tried any of their bottled stuff. I probably need to. I was actually really surprised by the Waterman inks that I got. I haven't tried a lot of the, um, not really Western brands, kind of older style. Yeah, shipping is not. Yeah, um, so the shipping on Goulet is a little high, which shipping costs money. I get that. I understand. And they pack it very well. And um, I love their, love their company. Their videos are amazing. Um, I watch every single week the um, Goulet Q&A. 
but yeah, their shipping's a little high, especially when you just want to get ink. You kind of like if you're gonna order from Goulet, I'm I'm spending like fifty dollars at minimum before I get anything. Got Arabian Rose earlier. It was a great color, but a bit dry. So my cousin Josh actually got Arabian Rose. I don't know why I haven't tried any of those private servings he got. I forgot about those two. He just mentioned it. And it was, it was a gorgeous freaking color. Loved it. Drawings tend to have great shading if that's your thing. So I like a little bit of shading. I'm not uh, crazy about it. Like I don't have to have it, but yeah, I, I, I really like it. Orange Burst and Fiesta Red. I love, love orange, man. In case that wasn't obvious, sorry. Um, I love the color orange. I've been looking for a slightly better color to match my Sailor. Um, I may have to look into that with the orange burst. Fiesta Red sounds really, really bright too. But it's pretty obvious I like bright inks. I, I don't think I've ever reviewed a black ink actually, which I only have one, which is a, uh, it's a Miki Black. Australian Rose from, Australian Swan from Noodlers. Um, yeah, the Australian Swan I've heard a lot about. I really, really want to get a bottle of it. I like Noodlers inks. They give you a lot of stuff. Um, the, I'm not sure how to phrase this. The consistency is odd for me in the colors that I've tried. Um, they're very absorbent, um, I think is what I'm trying to get at. My favorite from Noodlers was the Noodlers. Let me see if I can find it real quick. If you're wondering why I'm holding my hand here, it's because if I don't and I remove it, that pen, it gets over. I have no idea why. Um, let's see. Newler's Widowmaker is amazing. This color right here. This stuff. I, I, I love this. This is by far my favorite Newler's ink. It's it's really, really good. I like it a bit. Um, both Australian Swan and Arabian Rose look similar. At that point, I'd probably go with Australian Swan if they're if they're pretty close. Um because Noodler's inks are, are fairly wet. Actually, Brian Goulet mentioned they had a an interview. Hey, we're at six people now. Sweet. Um, an interview with Nathan Nathan Tardif, who runs Noodler's, um, coming up this like this coming week. So in six days, I guess, because he's going to be out of town or something like that. Um, so I, I'm looking forward to that. Um, if you don't know, Noodler's is run by basically one dude. Just, just one guy, um, him and his girlfriend, I believe. Best red, unfortunately, I can't get it. it. Does it not ship to to where you are, or is it just not available to purchase from? It, it's a, it's a, it's a pretty good red. There are some similar colors though. Um, if you can't get that, um, let's see. I don't think I have one here with me. Um, I don't think I've done it. Diamine Oxblood is just a tiny bit darker. Um, Pilot Momiji is a little bit brighter, just a tad bit. Both of those are fantastic, fantastic inks. Um, talking about inks, getting Noodler's inks in Germany is a freaking pain in the rear end. A three ounce Gruen Cactus easily runs. Holy crap, dude. That's super expensive. Even from that eBay seller, that's expensive. So they're about um, like twelve dollars a bottle here. I get every other in Neuter's link here, even the rear ones. I have Oxblood. I love Diamond Oxblood. It's great. I am so sorry that Noodlers cost that much in Germany. That's that's very unfortunate. That is insane. I'm actually um, going to Germany next year, so I I'll definitely avoid buying any of that there. Um, Jared said I really like. Tyanaman. Um, it was an impulse buy when I got when I visited Van S. Um, I'm super jealous that you got to go to Van S. That's really cool. Um, I'm not sure what shade that is. Noodlers has so many. I try to keep up with a lot of them. Um, I'm not sure exactly what color that is, but I've heard of it. If that's any consolation, I need to get more Noodlers inks. Honestly, um, a lot of people quote his like political stances as being controversial. I'm re not really sure what any of them are. Um, I'm just kind of here for the ink. So, but yeah, I really like Noodlers. We, we have Gruen Cactus. Um, it's a pretty decent green. I've tried their Hunter Green, um, their Widowmaker, and Tiamin's Bright Red. I will probably have to check that out then. I, I, I have so many inks. There's such a similar color. I probably don't need another Bright Red, but I, I really like it. So I'm, I'm probably going to have to check that one out as well. That's that's 
fairly tempting. There's actually um, there's an, a store somewhat near us called Origami Inc. They're in Asheville, North Carolina, if any of you guys are around that area. Um, their stuff is, to be fair, it's a little overpriced. But their Noodler's Inks are about sticker price. So that's where I've gotten all my Noodler's Inks from in the past. Um, I may have to go up there in the next couple of weeks or months and uh, pick up some more stuff from them. I don't really want to get it from that strange eBay for like 20... Oh, just a couple of inks from Noodlers on Amazon. They're almost 20. Yeah, Amazon... Uh, like, I hate to say this. I wish I could always say support your local pen retailer or your online pen retailer, your Van S, Pinchelet, Goulet Pens, all that stuff. But sometimes it's just difficult when the prices are so far apart. Like you said right there, if there's like... I believe that's euros. I'm pretty certain that's euros. Um, if there's like a 40 euro difference between the inks from a retailer near you and Amazon, buy off of Amazon, dude. Um, yeah, for there to only be five to seven of the Noodler's inks that were on Amazon is a little strange because Noodler's makes so many inks um, with very bizarre properties, which are interesting. But none of them pretty much are applicable to my life. Like, I don't need Bulletproof or anything like that. But they have some very interesting, like the laser proof inks are cool. The anti freeze inks are really nifty. Um, let's see. Yeah, that's just that's just a massive, massive price difference there. That that strange eBay guy. I don't know about that. Um, you may be able to order from depending on where you are. You can order from Amazon from different countries. Um, for example, when I got my Nintendo Switch, it was very difficult to find here in America. Very difficult to find kind of everywhere. I ended up buying it off of Amazon.es, which I believe is Spain. Could be wrong. But um, sometimes for certain sellers, they'll ship to you. The sellers are just too greedy. You're not wrong in some cases. Sometimes there's import taxes and tariffs, things like that. that cost money. I understand that. Um, like a lot of the Japanese pens, they're going to get markups. I get that. But you're right. Sometimes sellers are too greedy. If there's something that is difficult to get in your location and somebody has that, they can charge whatever the hell they want for it, which is a massive, massive problem. Only problem I've had with Amazon for inks is their packaging. Yeah. So I actually got, um, what was it? Waterman Tender Purple, I think was the shade from Amazon. I've now gotten several links from Amazon. None of them had any problems. The Tinder Purple was out of its box. It was not even in the box anymore. It had completely come out and it was just like floating. And that's dangerous because the glass might not break, but the plastic can certainly crack. And it is euros. Okay, I was right. Sorry about that. I just wanted to make sure. 60 prices from Amazon. Oh, the 60 euro price is already from Amazon. Oh, so a fraction of them cost 20. Uh, locally, no chance. That's the problem with noodlers is... With the demand, you'd think he'd step it up, go to a distributor or something like that, but uh, I'm sure he has his reasons, but it just makes it difficult. They charge even the twi Chinese pens for more price than a Twisby. Seriously? That's insane. That's that's ridiculous. Um, I'm sorry. That's that's unfortunate. It cracked for me, this flimsy waterman bottles. Yeah, um... The construction on, on some ink bottles is very, very different from others. Um, my, my favorite bottles still to this day are the Pilot Orochizuku bottles. They are very well made. However, I've heard of the craps, not the craps, <laughs> the caps cracking on them as well. Um, I, I haven't had any bottles crack on me. I buy most of my ink either in person or from Goulet, and Goulet packs it very well. But if there's a really good price, I'll get it off of Amazon. Um, so that's, yeah, Amazon is not too concerned with the amount of sales that they're doing. They don't, they don't care if your ink breaks, to, just being honest. There are probably some smaller online shops that sell it, heard of some of the Netherlands, but it's kind of an inconvenience. Yeah, that, that's a problem too. Um, the inconvenience thing. So it's either hard to get or it takes 50 years to ship it to you or it costs an absolute fortune. That's you think nowadays with the internet and everything and communication between most countries, 
that we would be able to get things cheaper and faster, but we're still kind of stuck there. Um, it's difficult to import things or, you know, um, there is actually a, a podcast I listen to every now and then, maybe like once or twice a month um, called the Pin Attic Podcast. And there's a guy from, I believe, Britain on there. His name is Mike Hurley. And he talks about getting pins from like Bung Box. And he just, he talks about how much of a pain it is to get through customs and all that stuff. I, it, it almost makes it not worth getting the stuff when you have to put up with all of that and extra fees and everything. Luckily, thanks to the internet, small businesses are setting up shops online. That is perfect. So a lot of people talk about the internet taking small businesses out of the you know, realm of possibility anymore. And to a degree, that's right, especially here in America. Um, smaller businesses, when you buy like a brick and mortar store, it's expensive. There's a lot of overhead. There's a lot of costs to cover. And if you're not in a good area, you're not going to get much traffic. But to get in a good area, it's a lot of money, etc. Tiny shops on the internet are fantastic because they can do a lot of business. They have minimal overhead. Most of the people are doing it from their homes. Um, some people, if they get bigger, will go to you know huge shops. But small for small businesses, internet's great. The only thing, which is the same with any physical store, is that your your traffic might be minimal. But thanks to Facebook and Instagram and all this stuff, you know it's it's not too bad. You can get a decent. Uh, out of customers with a small online business. But there's Dime Mine. Dude, you get Dime Mine for 12 euros a bottle? Ugh. I'm, I'm seriously probably have to buy some ink when I'm over there next year. That's that's a fantastic price. I love Dime Mine bottles. I am actually have my pumpkin right here. Boom. This is the first Dime Mine ink. No, second. I got Oxblood first. But Dime Mine pumpkin's a great, great orange fantastic color i love diamond inks they're really consistent they're very very well behaved they're reliable which is very important for fountain pens i had ordered a bunch of inks from krishna for like four months and they were found and that stuff was like three dollars a bottle i just ordered a bunch and had to wait a month to get it that's ridiculous i will say though krishna inks i seriously need to try out i've seen them on van s recently um and the exact colors are great. I'm probably going to order some of those next week as well when I am not quite so broke. I have bills to pay track. But yeah, um, Krishna Inks. Definitely want to check some of those out. Um, if you get them, if you don't mind, just leave a comment on one of my videos. Or you can actually just email me. That's jakestake00 at gmail.com. No apostrophes or anything. Um, let me know how they perform because I'm curious. I don't want to get them if they're garbage. But if they're interesting and... and worth it you know maybe um just got the just got the lami from a brick and mortar shop which has an online shopping website dime mine is supposed to be of inks get for ten dollars be careful them christian inks didn't mess up your pens okay so um lami pens are really good i i really really i think um so i'm gonna buy a watch when i'm over in europe and i'm also going i think i know what watch i want um steinhardt triton blau i believe i'm, I'm probably pronouncing that horribly um I want to get that when I'm over there, if possible. And I also really, really want to get a Lamy Dialogue 3, if I have the money. Diamine is the Twisby of inks, because they are reliable, they are exciting, and they are affordable. You get it for $10 a bottle? Ugh. Yeah, they're like 14 bucks over here for a bottle. It's it's expensive. As far as Christian, Christian inks messing up my pens, um, that I'm very, very, very... Um, attentive to my pens. I pay a lot of attention. I'm very particular maintenance. I'm actually, I just finished a maintenance video. I decided I'd live stream before I upload it. So that's going to be coming out right after this. But, um, yeah, I, I don't want to mess up any of my pens. So if I do get, I'll probably try on a cheap pen first. I've had them for like, Oh, so you've had them for a while. Okay. Krishna Christmas Eve is a nice purple. It forms all my Twisby stuff. I don't use enough paper for it to see the sherm. Um, they're thick, but there's a frequent drying issue. I would skip it as a brand. See, that's that's gonna be that would be a major major demerit for me. Um, if they're drying up, that's that's not good because um, while I'm very retentive about my maintenance for my pens, a lot of people are not going to be, and I it it would break my heart for for me to recommend something to someone and then it end up damaging their pen. Even if they didn't blame me, it would just it that that would that would kill me. 
So I, I'm, mm, I might skip those unless I just did a really good deal on it or something. I don't know if we live, if we in Germany actually have pens and ink jobs that carry something besides Lamy or typical school pens, but I'm pretty new to this pen rabbit hole. I haven't discovered them. The pen rabbit hole is a real thing, my friend. I started off with this Lamy right here, the Safari charcoal. And um, my most recent pen purchase is this here, which is... 15 times the price, something like that. Be careful. Um, I think you're going to be okay as long as you'll spend above your means, which no one should ever do. Christian inks look great, but don't leave them in the pen for long. No smudged ink on the paper days after writing. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, <laughs> probably not going to try those out then, because that infuriates me, the smudging ink thing days after writing. I've had that... Um, with like the shimmer inks if, I, if there's too much glitter sometimes the glitter will kind of smear so i that would piss me off um but yeah their colors do look great but if i can't leave them in a pan for a week or two which is like the time i do my ink reviews because i really want to get a good grasp of the, how they perform then there's no point in me getting them um their inks do look really really interesting though but that that's a shame that they don't perform well do try it uh I might pick up a bottle. Um, the only thing that throws me off about them is their bottle sizing. I don't know about for you guys where you live, but here you can, it's like a 20 milliliter bottle or something like that. It's very, very tiny. Um, so I would have to move that over to like a Goulet sample vial and then go from there. Or maybe uh, use a syringe or eyedropper fill, something like that. But if you know someone who orders diamond inks for you, just order them from Amazon, like $14 for me. That's probably cheaper than 12 yeah, yeah, the exchange rate um, and the shipping for the other country. Yeah. I like diamond inks. I need to try more. I've gotten them. Um, I don't go on Mass Drop a lot, but I, I went there semi-recently. I, I, I go there and look at stuff every day, but I don't buy stuff a lot. And we got like a five-pack of the, um, the, what are these, 30 mil bottles? Autumn Oak, by the way. Oh, God, this is a great ink. Watch my review for that if you haven't. Um, don't you have some low-end fountain pens just to test them? Yeah, um, I do have. That's probably what I put them in, actually. Um, I definitely have some. What I would probably put it in, honestly, because the pen performs so well, is my M2, my Moonman M2. I, I, I get the name and the brand confused. I'd probably try it in that. Um, or maybe my pen BBS 323. Both of those are really well-performing pens, but I wouldn't be heartbroken if they um, if they end up messing up. Autumn Oak is great. You're correct. Autumn Oak is fantastic. Um, let me get the swatch out here. Because it is... Ugh. That's such a good ink, man. I love orange inks, but look at the shading on that. That's ridiculous. That's That's just a good ink. Like I mentioned in my review, this is what I wanted Apache Sunset to be, and it just wasn't. I've got a lot of flack for Apache Sunset. No dip pens. Um, I don't own any dip pens. However, my wife, I guess I kind of own them. Um, we Yeah, we do have some glass dip pens, so I would probably try one of those. Um, I don't like the, it's not really a nib, the tip on those, though, that's kind of scratchy. I have the big bottle, couldn't get Apache Sunset. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. Um, well, I don't think you did too bad because, like I said, performance-wise and readability-wise, Automote beats it out by a mile. I use very bright white paper. Um, I use Nemesign paper, if you're curious, because the format's very well laid out for my for my work. I'm very particular about the formatting while I'm taking notes and things. Um, it's just, it's so hard to read. Apache Sunset is too bright. The problem with reviewing inks is you're only allowed to hold approved community views. That's one thing that I just, uh, I don't, I would probably have more subscribers if I only said positive shit, but I, I don't. Um, and that's, some people don't like that. That's just how it is. But I'm going to tell, my, my thing and my stance on it is when I'm reviewing something, that I have spent money on, I will say whatever I want about it. But I want it. I want it to be, you know, accurate. But I'm going to say it like it is because 
you guys might buy something off my recommendation. And if you buy something, I want it to be great. I do not want you guys to, to buy Apache Sunset and get a bright yellow ink that you can't read on paper. That was my problem with it. I bought a huge bottle of that stuff. I used it three times, and that was for the review, and I hated it. Hated it. Not like the others. How do you feel about Nubers? Habanero. I appreciate your frankness. Thank you for appreciating my frankness, because that is, you know. Um, Nubers Habanero. I've heard a lot about it. I think it's really pretty, and I need to get a bottle. Um, I really like the color. I think the shading would be interesting. I haven't tested it out yet, but I definitely want to get, get some of that and check it out. Um, speaking of frankness, one thing that I... So, the Nutsack Bags satchel, I hate that name. God, I hate that name. Like, it's funny. It's funny for a second, but then it just gets childish. Um, I was kind of hesitant on that because that was provided to me for free. And... I, I told the guys, I was like, well, if you would like to provide this bag to me, I'll give you an honest review, and I'll send it back. So I, a day or so before I filmed the review, I've been carrying this bag for months at this point, like two or three months. I emailed my contact from the, um, that sounds so professional, I emailed my contact. I emailed the guy I've been um, chatting with about the bag. And I was like, hey, I want to buy this off of you guys because this is perfect, and I love it. Well, it's not perfect, but I, for me, it's, it's really good. And he was like, no, just keep it as a gift. So that was kind of, it was kind of weird for me. I wanted to be very honest and upfront in my review about that. So if I get anything else provided by manufacturers, I'm going to be honest with you guys that it's provided. But I also don't want that to influence anything. If anything, because I'm so paranoid about it, I feel like it makes me more picky when I'm looking at stuff. I'm already very picky when I look at things. Because what I appreciate in, in stuff is the detail. Like the, the, little, the little writing here instead of the giant writing. Um, that sticking up over the pivot is really annoying. That's going to piss me off. The scratches on the inside of this irritate me. So this knife, so far, initial impressions, performs well. But it's going to get some points knocked off for presentation. The initial, my initial take on it, because it's just, it's not... They're wanting to charge $75 for this knife on the website. That's not a $75 knife. It's nowhere close. Paper is actually not that expensive in Germany. 120 sheets of Oxford, 90 gram per square meter costs only 3.69 euros. It sucks that being pretty strong is not that bad. It's just practical because it dries fast. Um, paper is something that when I got into reviewing fountain pens, I didn't think I would care about all that much. I was using, like, I got like a, um, oh God, Leuchtturm. I really hope I'm pronouncing that right. A Leuchtturm notebook. It's fairly absorbent, and it kind of bleeds through, but it was decent. Then I found Rhodia, and Rhodia is amazing, but it's expensive. It is. It is very expensive. And then I found Tomway River, which is, like, perfect. I love Tomway River paper so much, but I cannot afford it most of the time. So that's why when I do my reviews, I don't do them on Tomway River because I can't afford to keep doing it. Um, I'll just stick with Rhodia. You should, because Rhodia paper is damn good. It's price to performance. It's my favorite. Just hands down. It's it's great, great, great stuff. Midori paper is also really good. I don't know how expensive it is. Um, the Nemesign paper that I use at work is cheaper than Rhodia, and it dries just a little bit faster. It's not quite as smooth. It's a little bit more toothy. Um, but I use it because it dries faster and because I'm flipping and writing quite a bit. So life is amazing. You are correct. And in guide life is life is great. And I hope all of you continue to have a long and very fun lives because it's, it is amazing. And there's so many things you can experience. Like you can even writing with a fountain pen is such a, it was for me a life changing experience. Oh, life paper. Life is amazing too, though, my friend. Life is amazing too. I have no idea what life paper is. I thought you were just being existential. That's okay. That's cool. Um, <laughs> you don't see the writing from the other side, just a tiny bit, and it's not close to bleed through. So yeah, minimal ghosting, no bleed through. When you write over the same spot like four times, when the EF starts to fall apart, but just on the side of the sheet. It sounds like pretty good paper for the price, to be honest. Um, I'm always into trying new paper brands, especially the cheaper stuff. Just because for a lot of my viewers, 
And me personally, like I don't, I, I don't have a ton of money, or this would be full with Viscontis and Pelicans and other kinds of pins that I can't afford. Um, but I'm, I'm, I'm fairly practical. I like to think so. A paper needs to be affordable for you to be able to use it. So if you find good paper that doesn't fall apart when you write on it and it just goes a little, doesn't bleed through, which is about what the Nemesign does, stick with it, man. Because that's, that's good stuff. I love the Nemesign paper. Um, I'm actually about to have to buy a new notebook because I'm running out. I have maybe a few more days worth of use left on it. But yeah, papers, once you find the right paper, you're, you're pretty set. Because once you learn how it performs and everything, it becomes that much that much better. Like um, when I was move that when I was at the pen show, um, you always want to test your, your your pens on paper that you have with you, so you can see how it performs when you're going to write with it. You know, I had my Rhodia notepad with me just because I knew how it performed. I've used Rhodia a lot. It's the paper that I use not the most anymore because I write a lot at work, but for my reviews and stuff, I know how it performs. It's very consistent. It's, it's great. Rodeo paper is fantastic. I will say something though. So field notes paper, I hate it. Like I hate field notes paper. It's for fountain pens. It's garbage. It's, I initially tried like when they're steno pads, which is a, a legal pad. So it's, um, it's like a portrait sheet split down the middle, for basically for like columns. I just kind of split a bit more off to one side, things like that. Um, so the column splitting worked perfect for me and, and my use for it, but the paper was just absolute garbage. It just sucked. So I'd, I, I couldn't imagine having to use that every day. Rhodia paper is a pleasure to write with, though. It is an absolute pleasure. Okay, guys, I've been streaming for like an hour and 40 minutes, and my phone is about to die, so I'm going to go ahead and hop off here. Thank you guys so, so much for jumping in here and chatting with me. I had a blast, um, and there's a few things I'll check out because recommendations now. If you monitor Amazon, especially as school is coming, you can find great, you can find build deals on Rodia. I'm going to have to check that out. Thank you. I'm, I'm glad you had fun there. Um, I missed the school thing, but no, school is upcoming. I'm 